Hi, Ty Holloway here with Holloway Bros Fishing. Uh, today in the vise we have a muddler minnow, one of our favorite flies for summer steelhead, uh, particularly here on the North Umpqua. We use it in a variety of sizes and colors uh, and fish it in a variety of ways. We'll riffle hitch it kind of through the uh, spun deer hair or just kind of uh, behind the spun deer hair in front of the collar and uh, use it as a dry fly uh, or we'll fish it on a loop knot or a regular clinch knot and have it just uh, barely subsurface. Uh, we'll also fish it on a sink tip occasionally, uh, but mainly in those first two fashions. Uh, we use it a lot as a comeback fly, uh, fishing to a fish that has shown itself to a, a, another skater but isn't quite committed to eating that one. Uh, but it's a fly that we fish all the time and would not have, uh, would not leave the truck without it in our box. Uh, hope you enjoy. We're tying a uh, steelhead muddler here today. Uh, I've got the uh, TMC 700 size 6 hook uh, and using uh, a dot Vivas thread here. Uh, you could also tie this fly on like a, a TMC 5262 just like a regular trout nymph and a 2x 2x long and 2x heavy. Um, but like the 700 here just a little little uh, stouter hook. Um, it's not gonna not gonna bend out on a nice uh, you know 10 pound wild summer steelhead like we have here in the North Umpqua. So tied, tied to some pearl crystal flash in here, like six or seven strands for the tail. Our body is just going to be gold uh, hollow tinsel, holographic tinsel. And tie that in, bringing it back to where our thread is visible. And I'm just going to advance our thread forward here as far as we're going to have our body go. The body's going to go about two-thirds of the way or three-quarters of the way really up the up the hook shank right about there. Trim off our excess. Wrap our tinsel forward. Tie our tinsel off, trim that. So now our wing, uh, you know, like a traditional mother, is going to have a uh, squirrel underwing and a, uh, a turkey, turkey kind of tented turkey overwing. Uh, here I'm just going to use the tip of a uh, marabou feather, red in this case. So just the tip, I'm going to kind of pull it straight. Have that be our wing. And then I have it extend back just about uh, two thirds of the way of our tail. Tie that in, kind of loose, and you kind of bring it back on top and cinch it down just like that there. I like I like the marabou for a wing. It swims in the water a little bit, and uh, you know, really, we're using using this fly pretty much exclusively as like a waking dry fly, um, which means just kind of that that uh, deer hair head, or in this case, we're going to use elk hair, but the the head is kind of what's uh, creating the wake and and uh, flotation of the fly and 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 eliciting the strike from the steelhead. Uh, so I don't like spend a whole lot of time on the wing just because it's not a, a you know a fishing part of the fly in, in this case. Um, so I like like just that quick and easy marabou hair or a marabou uh, wing rather. Now for our our head, got the most important part. I'm gonna take off. I'm gonna use uh, some uh, elk hair here, some cow elk. It's a cow. It's spinning cow elk from Nature Spirit. Going to cut off a pretty good sized chunk here, kind of more than we anticipate on using. I'd say uh, like a little over maybe a pencil and a half worth of, of hair here in diameter. 
I'm just going to kind of spread it out. Hold it by the tip, spread the butt out just like that. I'm going to use a comb here to pull out all this under fur. Getting this under fur out is an important step. Really uh, helps it spin once on the hook. And, and um, you know, if there is any fur in there, it kind of uh, detracts from the flotation of the fly. So just like that. We're going to stack this because we want we want the collar to be nice and even. Not completely necessary, but uh, adds adds a little bit to the aesthetic value of the fly, I would say. Got a nice even stack there, tips in there. I'm gonna pull that out. The less you can handle it at this point, the better. The more you handle it, the less uh, even the stacking comes. I'm gonna just make a thread base there if there isn't one already. And I want the uh, I want that collar kind of coming back almost to the hook point. So I'm gonna be right in there and try to have that the hair kind of come in a, a full circum, circum, uh, circumference of the hook. Do a couple loose wraps straight up and down right on the top of each other. And we're gonna do our spin just like that. That's pretty good. So you do, you do those couple loose wraps and once you see they're in line and the, the hair is kind of covering the hook in its entirety and full circumference. You just let let go as that as that uh, as it wants to spin and pull in a nice couple even uh, even taunt wraps over those initial wraps, those initial uh, loose wraps. So now we're just going to do a couple wraps through the through the hair up to the up to the eye of the hook there. Just like that. Now we can kind of pull this back, giving us room to finish our fly here. Whip finish there, trim our thread without cutting any of the hair, ideally. So now we get to sculpt our head. And this head is kind of what dictates how the fly wakes and floats. And so we want to spend a little bit of time on this portion here. And you can use a razor or scissors. I like to use uh, kind of both. I'm going to use a razor to kind of get the shape I want. And then I'm going to come in with the scissors and uh, just kind of trim away the trim away the remaining fibers that we don't want. And the shape that I look for is just kind of a, a nice even round head but pretty big maybe maybe a little larger than what you're what you normally see we want this thing we want this thing to push some water and move some water and and, and float and wake so i'm pulling pulling on the uh everything ex all the hair except for the collar And we're trying to cut away everything except the collar. And you can do most of that, most of the cutting 
with this razor blade and then we can come in come in afterwards with our scissors so that collar is a little full but we can fix that just by cutting into it a little bit this is looking pretty good though so I'm going to do everything else with the scissors here I like leaving the collar on top especially, but I end up cutting quite a bit of a weight underneath, allowing, uh, allowing kind of the body of the fly to ride a little lower in the water, which uh, ultimately kind of creates a, a better wake. Kind of trim away the the unruly hairs there. And you like I like looking at it kind of from straight on. And we want that head to have a nice kind of even circumference away from the away from the hook. That looks pretty good right there. So that is our finished uh, finished fly there. We rig this more often than not with a, a riffle hitch where we're uh, bringing our half hitch behind the uh, head of the fly and forward of the collar so it comes right right through there and uh, it ends up having the, your line coming uh, just perpendicular off the, off the hook shank straight down directly underneath the, underneath the uh, fly which adds uh, to its uh, flotation and, and, and makes it put off a bigger wake. That's another reason we don't use, uh, oftentimes you'll see like a moose tail, tail muddler, which adds flotation in the back. We actually want this back portion to kind of sink and sit in the water and have this head uh, be almost uh, above the water and kind of pushing pushing water, creating that wake. Um, so that, that's it, our, our steelhead muddler right there. Uh, my favorite steelhead dry fly. There you have it. That was the indispensable muddler minnow. Uh, you should always have a few in your box when going to your favorite summer steelhead stream. I'm hoping you can use the techniques in that video to tie up a few of your own in your favorite size and color. Uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to Holloway Bros Fishing and uh, comment below and let us know what you'd like to see in the future.